All right, um, my name is Joram. I'm an engineer at Mattermost, and I will be talking about building a web app component. Um, so let's get started. Um, quick introduction. So um, we build all our web app components out of uh, React, React.js. Um, so there's a link there if you want to go um, read about it, if you're not familiar. And then uh, we do most of our storage and server interaction uh, using our Redux repository. Um, if you don't know what Redux is, Click the link or read it there. Um, and there's some. We did some other dev talks about those in the past. If you want to go watch those as well, um, there's a link there to where we store our, our web app components. Um, I'll probably show that directory a little bit later in the talk here. Um, and then the last link there is just a, a link to our Redux repository, um, which, I, like I said, handles all the the majority of the storage and the server interaction for um, both our mobile apps and um, our web app. Um, although the web app's still kind of in a transition period from Flux to Redux. Um, yeah, so getting right into it, um, basically there's there's five things you need to really worry about when um, you're building a web app component. Um, one, um, we have a new requirement that components must be pure. Um, what we mean by that is um, all information required to render uh, the component is passed in by props. So you're not going to talk to any stores. You're not going getting any global state um, or anything like that that is going to affect the rendering of the component. Everything should be coming from the props. Um, there, there is a small exception for this where um, some stuff you can have in the state of the component itself. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, but for the most part, everything should be coming from props if you need it to render the component. Um, so the second part I already touched on a little bit, but you should have no direct store interaction. Um, so you'll notice in a lot of our web app components right now that are in the old method, um, they talk directly to the Flux stores, um, and they'll pull they'll pull like current user data all over the place. They'll pull channel information and stuff like that, um, and that can cause a lot of problems because it's not synced up with what's actually being rendered. Um, so we don't do that anymore with with Redux. Everything is, should be coming from the store, um, and it should be coming in through the props, not directly from the store. Um, so to do this, we'll use containers to wrap the component if we need it. Um, that's the case, for example, if um, you have a component and it needs some sort of information from the store that its parent component cannot pass in, um, you'll need to use container. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later as well. Um, three, um, when you're build, we're building web app components, you want to do our best to make them generic and reusable. Um, so for example, um, we have a confirm uh, modal. So it's, little, it's essentially a pop-up. It's like confirm, OK, cancel, no. Um, and then you can provide it some callbacks to do stuff based on cancel or yes, depending on what you click. Um, that's something that's great because it's reusable. Um, we use that confirm modal all over the place. Um, and to, ma to make it reusable, we let um, the, some of the CSS classes be overridden by props. Um, some of the, the text and, and things like that on the buttons and the title can get overridden by props being passed in. Um, and we, we'd like most of our web app components to be as reusable and generic as possible um, so we can share the code. Um, that won't always be the case. There will be times when you need to do something specific, and it just makes sense to um, build a specific web app component for it. Um, so that doesn't always hold true. Um, for um, all new web app components must have component tests. Um, there's a different dev talk about um, component tests that George did um, a month ago. So I'll link to that later as well. And then five, um, web app components must also be documented um, for their props. Um, this is because um, we can sometimes have cryptic names or the variable names uh, for the props don't really make sense. Um, so it's nice to have a bit of documentation there just kind of explaining um, exactly what the prop does and how it affects the rendering of the component. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of the requirements. Um, here's a general overview of what you want to do when you're building a new component. Uh, first, you'll want to design it. Uh, then you want to build it, build a container if you need one. Um, then you want to implement it, add your component tests, make sure everything's working, and then you want to use it. Um, so I'll dive a little bit more into each one of these. So first, um, when you're designing a component, um, the, really, the thing you want to think about the most is kind of what information does my component need to render? Because um, that's the whole point of building a web app component. You want to build something that can display in the UI that the user can interact with or view, look at. Um, and it's going to need some sort of information about the state of the app. So trying to figure out what that information is. And once you figure out 
what that information is, it gets way easier to actually go build and design your component. Um, so basically, that could be that information could be app data from the store, it could be view state data, it could be data from the parent component, um, it could be lots of different things. I can't cover them all here, but uh, I'm sure you can. You'll have to figure that out for your specific component. Um, yeah, and then the answer to that question it essentially defines your props. Um, like I said before, everything that's coming in to be rendered by your component should be coming from props, um, with some small exceptions for things that will be in state, um, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, so yeah, um, if you don't know what props are, there's a there's a link there. You can go check it out. Um, but they're pretty core to to React components. Um, there on the right there, you can see I've got. Um, a screenshot of of some prop types. This is for a color setting um, component I just built the other day. So I'll go I'll go show this code for this component a little bit later as well. Um, but essentially, there I've got six different um, props. They have they have their types. So the first one there, ID is string. Um, dot is required means this is required for the the rendering of the component. If it doesn't have that, you'll get a JavaScript warning, um, a React JavaScript warning in your console telling you, hey, you're not providing um, this this prop. Um, and then you can just go through the different types. Um, the label there, you notice how it's the type, type is node. That essentially just means like an, a JSX or an HTML element that you're passing in. Um, it can be also just be text if that's all you want to pass in. Um, but this also lets us um, pass in essentially like the, the formatted message component, which lets us localize um, text. Um, so yeah, so then it just has comments kind of just like briefly describing what the, the, the prop is for. Um, and then you can also pass in functions. Um, something, for example, when the, the input changes for the color setting, um, this function will get called with the input. Um, yeah, that's pretty straightforward. Um, that's how your prop type should look. I'll show a full component with those later. Um, so once you've kind of figured out what the data your component needs to render and you've kind of defined your prop types, um, you need to kind of ask, the next question you need to ask yourself is, OK, does my component need a container? Um, so there are two ways to tell if your component is going to need a container. The first one is if you need state information, that cannot be provided by the parent component. So that means um, you need some sort of data that's in the state. Maybe it's a preference um, with that affects a uh, user preference that affects how your component is rendered. Um, for example, in the, the new post, post list, um, you need to know if uh, the post itself doesn't need to know if um, the preference for uh, compact displaying is set. But the post body and the post header, they need to know that. So they, this is a piece of information they need that the their parent component, the post, doesn't actually have. Um, so in the, those cases, they need um, containers to be able to pull that information from the store and put it into their props. Um, the other, the other uh, condition that would force you to need a container is if your component performs any action that affects the state of the app. Um, so basically, if that's true, then you'll need your container to basically grab the action out of Redux or out of the appropriate place. Um, for the 99% of the time, it's probably going to be out of Redux, but there will be some cases where um, we have web app specific actions. Um, and the, it'll get passed in as a prop as well. Um, I'll show you what that looks like on the next slide. Um, and then, so when you're building the container, uh, it should be called index.js. It should live in, a, in the folder. Same folder as your component and, and next to it. Um, so the example for that is basically if you have a component named item.jsx that you're they're trying to build, um, the container would be in the folder item slash index.js, and the component itself would be at item slash item.jsx. Um, that's just the, the way we're going. And the, the way that you can import that is you can just do import component slash item. You don't need to actually specify .js. You don't need to specify which folder, um, the fact, or which file in the folder, you just specify item, and it knows to pull in it, pull it in from index. Um, yeah, and then inside your container for the th for the actions and the selectors that, um, or sorry, for the the props that aren't being filled by the parent component, you need to fill those in with um, actions and selectors from Mightermost Redux. Um, there will be some cases where there's going to be selectors and actions that are specific to the web app. They won't be in Mattermost Redux, um, but they will still be using Redux 
but they just won't be in that repository. They'll be in the web app repository. Um, a lot of times when you're building a new web app component, you're going to be doing something that's got new actions or you need to select some new data that hasn't been selected before. Um, in that case, you'll need to go build um, these actions and selectors for the Redux repository yourself. Um, or some, and like in some cases, sometimes you'll need to build them in the web app um, in the web app repository if they're view state only and it's specific to the web app. Um, if you need to do that, you can click that link and it'll show you how to do that. And we also have um, some dev talks on selectors and Redux in the past, so you can go take a look at those as well to help you out. Um, so yeah, that's building your container. Um, this is kind of what it looks like for a, a built container. It's not a straightforward. Um, so I'll just kind of walk through it a little bit. So function map state to props. This function is basically is used by Redux to map um, the state of the Redux store to the, your props of your component. So in this case, um, own props is essentially any props passed in by your, your parent component. So sure, we want to continue passing those through in this case. So we, um, we pass those in. And the one piece of information that our, um, our component needs that our parent, the parent component does not have is the file info. So that's some sort of file metadata. Um, and to get that, we use a selector from the Mindmux, uh, Mindmux Redux repository. So we pass in the um, Redux uh, store. And then we pass in the bit we need to select the, the file metadata. In this case, it's the it's a post ID. Um, and then it just gets filled into the correct uh, prop, and it just works. Um, so, and then you just pass map state to props to into connect, and Redux takes care of the actual connecting and all the event handling, and all that, um, which is one of the nice things about Redux. So. Then you also need to handle the actions case. So if you if your component needs an action, you'll have to do this. Um, so basically, you import the action from the appropriate place. In this case, it's coming from the post actions in Mindmost Redux, um, and then you just pass it. You pass it into um, the actions uh, object here, and then it just works as. And you pass map dispatch to props into. Um, connect here and it, it'll just do some Redux work for you and behind the scenes and everything will just work. Um, so after you've built your container, um, you figured out your props, built your container, um, now it's time to actually build your component and implement it. Um, this, there's no real good single uh, guideline here um, since your component can vary widely based on what it is. But generally, um, things to keep in mind, you want to use the prop data and the actions to render your component. Um, and you want to make sure that your component is pure, so it extends React pure component. Um, all app data used for rendering comes from the props. Um, and then the one special case is local UI data is stored in the component state. So what that means is if it's some sort of state that doesn't need to be persisted um, when the component mounts and unmounts, and it's only specific to that component, feel free to store that in the state. Um, so that, that would be things little things like um, whether something's minimized in the UI or other little things like that. Anything major that needs to be persisted across um, uh, mounting and dismounting of that component, or is used by other, um, or is used by other components, you should be using putting it into store and using selectors and actions to modify it and get it. Um, Last, this last step is components. Actually, hold on. Before I go on to this, I will show you a complete component. Um, so color setting. Um, this is a component I built um, a couple days ago. Basically, what this is is just a, a setting on the system console page that lets you choose a color. Um, we needed this because we're adding a banner, um, an announcement banner to the top of um, the app um, to let admins maybe let users know that a maintenance period is coming up or whatever, um, and they wanted we wanted them to be able to choose the color of the banner and the text. Um, so we needed a way to set a nice little picker for the colors. Um, so that's what I built here. Um, so here's the prop types you, you saw before. We're extending pure component. Um, we've got a constructor just to set a bit of um, state. So this is the local UI state I was talking about. And this is a bit whether or not to show the actual picker itself. Um, 
And then we've got a couple couple things happening on component mount. Um, this is a little bit ugly, but this is kind of it's kind of a hard thing to do. Um, being able to we want to be able to the picker for we want the picker to close when you click off um, to just something that's not the picker. Um, and this is one of the ways to do that. So if you need to do something on the mount and unmount the component, just throw it in component did mount and component will unmount. Um, and then we just have uh, some functions we need to do some things like handle change. Um, when the color, in, when someone picks a different color in the picker, um, our parent needs to know about it. So we we pass it up through this uh, unchange function here. Pretty straightforward um, function for toggling whether the picker is visible or not. Um, this is the function for closing the picker we showed before. And if someone manually changes that instead of using the color picker, we have to handle that as well. Um, and then we just have the render function. So here in the render function, it just does some case checking and, and outputs the setting as we'd like it using the props only. Props and state only, nothing else. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, so then let's go back into here. Okay, so uh, the last step is component tests to make sure that your uh, component is being unit test. This is something new we recently started adding. Um, there's a dev talk here that, with this link uh, that George did that you can go look at. He also did a blog post. It's, it's linked in the description of that video as well. Um, so make sure you're adding component tests when you're adding a new component. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, once once you've built it, it's ready to use. Um, so here's some useful links. So basically, everything I just talked about is uh, is documented. Oh, um, uh, this this link here. So building a web app component. Um, follow that link for that. Um, there's also a documentation for how to add actions and selectors to Redux. If you if you have to do that for your web app component, so you can follow that information there. Um, and also, if you're if you're in the progress of migrating one of our old components, um, that's kind of using Flux or any of the old design patterns to use the Redux and the new design patterns, um, we have a doc for how to do that as well. Um, so that's pretty much it. So if you're interested um, in being around the community, please join prelease.manimos.com and uh, join the developers, contributors, and developers meeting channel. Thanks for watching.